Welcome to Audit Archive, where we run you through some of the most questionable and rather atrocious police encounters. Today, we're looking at a case where a police officer intentionally and illegally arrested a sober woman for driving under the influence, even though she passed all the field sobriety tests. She ended up spending hours in jail for no reason. On October 22, 2022, Officer Flynn with the Palm Beach Gardens Police Department was out on patrol duty just before midnight when he observed a vehicle speeding on the highway. Naturally, he initiated his lights and sirens before pursuing the vehicle and eventually pulling the female driver over. This entire encounter was captured on Officer Flynn's body cam and we will analyze how he went through his investigation and how the female driver was very clearly sober and not drunk whatsoever. I have one, yeah. Good evening, ma'am. I'm Officer Flynn. The reason I pull you over is you were speeding. Yes, I'm sorry. Do you have your, do you have your license for registration body. insurance? Yes. You still love on uh I sure I'm sorry. No problem. Where are you coming from now? Uh Jupiter went to dinner with some friends at the golf club and I don't know. Okay. Do you have your insurance as well? Yeah. Um, Alright, let me show you out your paperwork. I'll be right back with you. Have you had anything to drink tonight? Seven o'clock. Okay, you have any uh, controlled substances, cannabis, anything like that? I have, uh, no, I don't actually know. Uh, I do have a license to carry. Uh, uh, no, 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 I mean, have you have you taken any today? Oh, I've taken. Any today. No, I only use it for sleeping. Okay, if you would step out, I'm gonna do some exercise. Make sure you're not under the influence. We'll have you on your way home. Two nine two zero. Crazy. It's only roll. So far into the encounter, we have a few crucial points to note. First of all, the female driver, who was driving home from a dinner plan with her friends, immediately acknowledged her mistake of speeding down the highway and made sure to apologize for it. This basically meant that Officer Flynn was well within his rights to demand ID since the traffic stop was justified and the driver complied with no issue. Secondly, and most importantly, Officer Flynn asked her whether she had anything to drink that night. But this question appeared to be a part of his routine and didn't seem to be specifically targeted toward her. This assumption could be backed by the fact that the officer never mentioned an odor of alcohol or any clue of that sort which would lead to this question. Not to mention that the driver did not appear or sound drunk either. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, there are 15 clues that provide police with reasonable suspicion and have a high success rate in predicting drunk driving. A few important ones include slurred speech, slow response to questions, flushed face, red bloodshot watery or glassy eyes, alcohol odor on the driver, and difficulty exiting the vehicle. We've already seen that the driver exhibited absolutely none of these clues. She was sound and present. Lastly, the driver was honest and mentioned that she had one single drink that night, but it was way back at around 7 p.m. Note that this was almost five hours ago, since it was almost midnight at the time of this encounter. It was highly improbable that she experienced any lingering effects from a single drink she had a long time ago. All right, ma'am, come on back over here. All right, do you have any medical condition with your eyes besides wearing glasses? No. Are you able to walk a straight line? Yes. Can you bounce on one foot? Yes. All right, if you would, come on over here for me. Stand right in front of me. All right, six. Bring your feet together, hands at your sides, and actually put your glasses up on the top of your head. Okay. Thank you. All right, you see this red light? Yes. You're going to follow the red light with your eyes only, and you're going to keep your head still. Do you understand? Yes. Keep your head still. Just as far as you can go without moving your head.
There, give me that stuff. All right, give me one second. What Officer Flynn just did was conduct one of the few exercises known as the Standard Field Sobriety Test, otherwise referred to as SFSTs in short. It's highlighted that SFSTs are three tests to assist police officers in making arrest decisions of driver impairment due to alcohol. The three tests are the Horizontal Gaze Nystagmus Test, referred to as HGN, the Walk and Turn Test, and the One Leg Stand Test. We will soon discuss the ridiculous nature of these tests and how inaccurate they can be. But for now, let's focus on how the female driver performs in these tests. We've already seen that she has done well in the first test, which was the HGN. She showed no signs of nystagmus, which is a condition of involuntary jerk type eye movement that occurs when looking toward the side. This movement can be exaggerated when a person is intoxicated, but such was not the case here, so it's a clear pass. Now, let's move on to the next test, the walk and turn. Yeah, that's fine. All right, ma'am, if you would come to this side of the line, it's up to you if you want to leave the um, the heels on, because uh, it's going to involve walking heel to toe in the straight line. Do you okay. think you'll be able to do it? I mean, I'm nervous because of, I've never been in this position before, but... I'll show you what you got to do, and you let me know if you can do it in your shoes, all right? All right. So if, if you would go and place your left foot on the line for me, please. The driver's nervousness and anxiety, which she emphasized, makes perfect sense here for a few reasons. First, she's standing on the shoulder of a highway at night with cars and trucks whizzing right past her at 80 or 90 miles per hour, all while several flashlights are being pointed at her. Also, she claimed that this was her first time in such a situation, implying that she had never experienced such tests before. And right foot in front, heel touching toe, just like I'm doing. Arms at your sides. Okay, so it'll be just like this with your arms at your sides. No, don't start just yet. Wait, you gotta stay in the position while I explain it. It's the standardization of the exercise. Alright, so left foot on the line, right foot in front. Right foot in front, heel touching toe. Arms at your sides. Now hold that position. Don't start until I tell you to. When I tell you to begin, I want you to take nine heel to toe steps just like this. One, two, three, all the way up till nine. Imagine this your ninth step. Leave that front foot where it's at. Take a series of small steps to turn around and take nine heel to toe steps back. All right, it's important that once you start, you don't stop. Keep your arms down at your sides and count your steps out loud. Do you have any questions? No, I don't have questions. It just feels like, almost feels like a setup, but okay. Almost I mean, like a I'm setup? Not, yeah, I mean, I'm not, obviously, okay, yeah. I'm just a little, it's a little nerve wracking, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. something worth pointing out is that the driver made a pretty significant mistake in choosing not to remove her heels for the walk and turn test. Even though she still managed to perform relatively well and ultimately passed, it's very important to at least have some odds in your favor in these tests that are designed for failure. And this conveniently points us to the driver's biggest mistake so far, choosing to take the standard field sobriety tests. Note that you have the right to refuse these tests, and most people refrain from them because they can be subjective, difficult, and are often designed in a way that can lead to failure, even for sober individuals. Bear in mind that the SFSTs are administered and interpreted by police officers who are, by nature, human and prone to bias. They can be influenced by their own perceptions, interpretations, or even preconceived notions. The fact remains that there is no completely objective way to determine if a person has failed or passed the test. An online source states that, 
Critics of these tests often question the statistical evidence behind them and the ability of the officers to administer the tests and judge for impairments. For instance, a study by Patrick Barone in standardized field sobriety testing asked 14 police officers to view the videotapes of 21 sober individuals being put through a series of both field sobriety tests and normal ability tests such as walking, knowing their address, and similar. After that, the officers believed that 46% of the participants had too much to drink. Despite this, we can also tell that Officer Flynn, along with the two responding units on the scene, all had the intention of arresting the driver from the get-go. As a matter of fact, pay attention to the female officer on the left who pulls out her gloves while the tests are going on, essentially preparing for an arrest before a conclusion is made. All right, for this next exercise, this is going to involve balancing on one foot. So again, I'll give you the opportunity if you want to remove your shoes or you can do them with your shoes on. This is what you're going to end up doing, but I'll explain it all to you. Okay, so go ahead and bring your hands to your sides. All right, when I tell you to begin, I want you to raise one foot, either foot, approximately six inches off the ground. It's about the height of a soda can. While you're doing that, you're going to keep both knees straight and you're going to point the toes of your raised foot out at me. You're going to look down at your raised foot and you're going to count out loud. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and so on until you tell you to stop. Okay. The whole time your hands are going to be at your sides. Okay. It's a 30 second exercise. I'll tell you when the 30 seconds are up. If you place your foot down during the 30 seconds, just pick it back up and continue where you left off. Okay. So it's going to go just like this. Watch me. I'll demonstrate for you. 1,001. 1,002, 1,003, you got it? Yep. So you see how both knees are straight? Yep. My toes are pointed out, my hands are at my sides and I'm looking down at my foot. Yep. That's all you gotta do for 30 seconds. Okay. Just so you know, I have a mounting condition where I can't, I can't straighten this left knee. Uh, I can't straighten my knees fully, but I will do... Both of them or just the left side? Both of them, I can show you even if you want me to. I have knee surgeries, like really bad. Uh, Okay, we'll do we'll do a different exercise then. No, 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 we'll, we'll do a different one. I don't want to put any stress on your knees. Okay, do you know your left from your right? Show me your left hand. Show me your right hand. All right, go ahead and point your fingers like this with your thumbs in. At this point, since the driver pointed out her knee condition, Officer Flynn moved on to some alternatives, starting with the finger-to-nose test. But note that alternative field sobriety tests, such as the finger-to-nose test, may be administered for suspicion of driver impairment, but these tests have not been scientifically validated by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and therefore may not be admissible in court. Regardless, let's see how the driver performs in these alternative tests. Not on the, uh, on the top? Yep, there you go. Now just bring them down to your sides with your palms out. No, palms out. Oh. Yep, just like that. Now hold that position. I'm gonna explain it and then I'm gonna demonstrate it for you, okay? So when I tell you to begin, you're gonna you're gonna tilt your head back and you're gonna close your eyes. Okay. And I'm gonna give you a series of commands of left and right. When I say left, you're gonna extend your left hand out, touch the tip of your finger to the tip of your nose, and bring it back down. Same thing with right. Extend, touch tip to tip, bring it back down. It's important that you keep your head tilted and your eyes closed. And as soon as you touch your nose, you bring your hand back down to your sides. Okay. These are the tips of your fingers, and this is the tip of your nose. Do you have any questions? I don't think so. All right, go ahead and begin. Okay, so tilt back. Yep, and close your eyes. Start on four, eight, six, five, seven, nine. Left. Turn right. away and left wind drive for 79. Left. I was advising under which direction they turn right. three to five ten shots. No contact. Right. Left. Alright, for this next exercise you can relax. It's going to be the estimation of 30 seconds. 23, okay, so can you count to 30? Yes. I have to ask. All right, so when I tell you to begin, you're going to stay standing just like you are. When I tell you to begin, you're going to tilt your head back and you're going to close your eyes and you're going to imagine 30 seconds going by silently. However you want to count, once you believe 30 seconds are up, just open your eyes and say stop. That's all you got to do. So just like this, eyes closed, imagine silently 30 seconds, 30 seconds are up, stop. And that's it. Do you have any questions? All right, go ahead and look up, close your eyes and begin.
All right, that was about 41 seconds. All right, for this final exercise, do you know your alphabet? A through Z, not backwards, yeah. just A through Z? Yeah. Okay, so again, you're gonna stay standing just like you are. When I tell you to begin, you're gonna tilt your head back and you're gonna close your eyes. And you're gonna recite the alphabet for me, A through Z, slowly and non-rhythmically. That means no singing and don't skip any letters. Okay. So it'll be just like this, except your eyes are gonna be closed. It should be A, B, C, D, E, all the way through Z. Okay. Remember, don't skip any letters and don't sing. Okay. Do you have any questions about that? All right, go ahead and look up, close your eyes, and begin. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, X, Y, Z. All right, ma'am, at this time you are being placed under arrest for DUI, driving under the influence of alcohol, chemical, or controlled substance. Despite practically passing every single field sobriety test, the female driver was placed under arrest by Officer Flynn for driving under the influence of alcohol, chemical, or controlled substances. This was not only ridiculous, but it exposed Officer Flynn's tyranny, not to mention the other two officers who shamelessly witnessed it all without raising a voice against the arrest. Speaking of this, it's important to know that several states and municipalities have enacted legislation mandating an officer's duty to intervene if they observe a fellow officer acting beyond the bounds of policy and ethical and professional behavior. So, all three officers on the scene are equally responsible for this false arrest. For driving under the influence, ma'am. Those exercises we look for indicators of impairment and I observe multiple indicators. Oh my goodness. Do you have this on videotape? I do, ma'am. We have two cameras as well as a dash camera. Alright. So do you have anybody that can come pick up your dog or where do you live? Right now, of course. Do you live in gardens? No. Did you call fifteen? Yep. Possibly look like I was under the impairment. It's not one thing, ma'am. It's called totality of the circumstance. I mean. <laughs> so, um, what are, we, what are we doing about the dog? Yeah, what are you She said she has somebody in gardens. She might need her call. Okay. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That ain't so far. This is. Uh, it's crazy. Where's your, where's your phone at so I can grab it before we can call them? Can I, um, you want me to call the guy or what? Yeah, we'll, um, we'll set it up for you. Alright, what's the phone, what's the name? Um, I don't know if you call my car and now they want to take me to, uh, for a DUI or something. So, I'm going to need your help on sorting, helping me sort this out because Wait. I obviously haven't, obviously, I... We just need to come get the dog. Hi, Scott? <laughs> yeah. It's Officer Leslie's your Palm Beach friends. Please find it. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, just also, uh, Leslie's getting arrested for DUI and she has her dog to come over here and get her dog. If not, we'll have to take it to our station to get animal care control to come get it. And I'm not DUI. Ma'am, please, please just take a seat in here. We're trying to help you out right now and you're interrupting. Yeah. So please take a seat in the back seat. I feel, I feel violent. Would you be able to come get the dog? I mean, I'm, I'm in handcuffs for goodness sake. Please, please go ahead and take a seat. Because I had a couple cocktails. Okay, uh, yeah, no, we don't want you to do no, that we then. we don't want him doing the same thing. Alright. Okay, now what about Leslie? Yes. She's going to go down to the jail and she'll be out in eight hours. So right what? around eight o'clock. So about Wait eight a.m. Wait a second, hold on. That's standard for DUI, ma'am. I'm not DUI though. Well, I'm when not. We, under when we get down there, you'll have the opportunity to provide a breath sample. And we then I'll do... still be held eight hours. Yes, ma'am. No, you don't have to call me now. It's up to you. What? Like I said, she. Like I said, she's going down to the jail. She'll be out in eight hours. So. No, I'm not. not even... Attorney's not going to be able to do anything for you right now. So. But I'm not under the influence. Give me a breath. Give me a test or something. That's, That's where we're going next. Go down there. That's where we're going right after we sort this out. Okay, so, huh? Where's my car going to go? Palm Beach Gardens. I'm going to give you information on that. It's going to call and so much more. And what happens if, when, when I go and then you find out I'm not under the influence? We'll discuss that further. There's a whole process that we have, man. 
Okay, I'll meet you there. Thank you. You pulled me over for speeding, right? Correct. And then I told you that I had one drink at 7 o'clock. Well, people tell me they have nothing to drink and then they'll blow double the legal limit, okay? So okay, what, what you tell me doesn't I'm have anything to, to do with anything. I understand, like, why yeah. I am being targeted here on this situation. You're not being targeted, okay? You were pulled over. I observed indicators because of... Because I sped. All right, go ahead and move your feet inside, man. We're not going to debate this. I, no, Turn I, the I'm uh, not back camera on. be a jerk. Honestly, no, I No, really but we're, we're not going to debate I'm... it. This isn't the venue to do yeah, it. We're on the side done. of a road. You already... Ultimately, the driver, namely Miss Leslie, was transported to the Palm Beach County Jail, where she ended up spending a total of nine hours for a crime she didn't commit. After a blood draw and breath test, Miss Leslie was released with no arrest or citations, and there is no pending case under her name as of the date of this recording. Be sure to check out our previous video, where we cover another outrageous police encounter.